boom there we go there we go should be good to go welcome welcome this is the january 31st edition of tuesday with todd and tonight we're gonna talk a little dtf transfer action uh the big thing we're gonna talk about is just artwork i can go through and show you how to place artwork uh how to place orders online uh, but what to look for with artwork when you bring it in in uh, ways for you to check it beforehand uh, you know these are just some common things that we've seen over the over the last you know what two years of doing it so uh, hopefully we can give you a little better understanding of it so make sure when you get in check in let me know where you're from you know how's the weather in your area what's things like i don't even have anything in my cup we're gonna we've got a little water so we're gonna keep it good to go there make sure to check in check in now uh, we're running just a tad behind because I was in a call before this. Uh, I had a good day of calls and meetings, uh, but in between that call ending, Corey came in and started a conversation with me. I had to stop her. I'm like, hey, how long is this conversation going to be? Because uh, uh, I need to go live. And she goes, yeah. I'm like, uh, it's like a minute after five. And I go live at five. And she's like, it's 431. So apparently her clock is a half hour slow. And she thought she had plenty of time to chit chat with me. Could not. So now that's why we're running a little late. So you know, hey, we'll get Corey's clock fixed. We're gonna we're gonna ring her clock, right? Is that is that how that goes? So check in and see how everybody is doing. You know, make sure. Can you hear me? You know, and if you're watching on Facebook, guess what? I'm not gonna know who you are. You're gonna be F you because Facebook and Streamer do not play nice together. So the way to fix that is if we just head over to fatdadlive.com. I'll get you over to the YouTube channel and we'll see at least be able to see a screen name add some things in there and go from there. So let's check in, check in. Darren, good afternoon to you. Howdy from a seven degree Chicago line. Yeah, I'm over this cold. But Renee, on the plus side, is this time next week, we'll be in Vegas. That'll be two hours behind. So that's three, right? So we will be in class. No. Yes, class. All day class. We just had this conversation today. So we fly out Monday, class all day Tuesday, Wednesday, half day class floor, Thursday, is that right? Yeah, Thursday then is, we're flying out. So we just have a class in the morning. That doesn't sound right, does it? Class all day Tuesday floor, I don't know. Something doesn't, I have to go back and look. Anyway, we're going to be in Vegas next week for the APA show. Now we talked about doing some meetups or what have you. So Wednesday night, there is the after party that's at the show, and that's from, I think, 4.30 to 6, so it's after the show floor closes. So more than welcome, you know, to, to meet up there. That makes, I think, the best sense for everybody because, hey, you're already going to be there at the show, so uh, we're, we can meet up there at the after party and then maybe see about doing something afterwards from there. I know Tuesday is when we're looking at heading down to Fremont Street. So if you're, you know, if you're going to the show, you're in the area, you know, and you want to a little Fremont experience and, uh, you know, not zip line. apparently, we can head together and head down there. So that's the plan for next week. There won't be a show next week. Uh, Morning Mindset will only be Monday and Friday next week because we will be in Vegas for that. Also, orders placed, uh, you know, from Monday on won't start being processed till Friday. Don't worry, there'll be a code. Everything will still fall in that three to five days, but if you need something rush, we're not your guy to order from next week because things won't ship out until Friday. So I'll make sure to mention that again in plenty of time before then. But how else are we doing? Barb, hello to you. Good afternoon from North Central Minnesota. And what's up, Chuck? How are you doing? Kristen, hello to you. Linda, hello. Right, thanks for stopping by. Jose, good to see you as well. Curtis, ooh, Central Canada, 25 degrees. Man, you're like killing it out there. 25 degrees, that's definitely shorts weather. Feels like eight there in Kristen. George, good to see you. You know, I haven't talked to you much today because I've been, you know, down here in, in my whole all day. Uh, Mike sounds good. Thank you very much. Shanice, thank you for stopping by. Uh, like what I sent to you the other day. What did you send me? I don't know. Oh, yes, artwork. And that's the thing. We're some of it. We just don't know until we go through it. So we're able to go there. I feel like crap. I went to bed right after I got home from school. That is not not good. Yeah, I've seen that, Linda, that Central Texas shut down due to ice, 33 degrees. I've seen there was a couple of vendors that said, hey, we're not even, we're, we're not chancing it because we we can't do anything. We don't have the equipment to handle when this type of weather comes, so it's a snow day. Yes, okay, I am correct on that. Yeah, Jerry, cold and icy St. Louis. Yeah, everybody's getting hammered with it. Uh, YouTube link is if you just head over to fatdadlive.com, so you just head right here. Type in Fat Dad Live. That'll get you over to our YouTube channel. Then when you're in YouTube channel, you can just click on the live and then we'll be there. And while you're there, you might as well like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell because, hey, 
and we go live, you get notified on it. So we will get into, let's see, we'll get this banner off here. So what I'm going to do is a screen share. I'm going to bring in my logo. I'm going to show you how I set up artwork, what we look at. If you guys have your questions, comments, concerns, make sure to post them in here. We're going to continue on with that. So let's bring this in here, and then I should be able to make this full screen. Now, I use Corel, and as you can see, Corel, I'm trying to move something on the other screen, and it's not working. You want to know why? Because I was on the other screen, and I, I couldn't figure out how to make that stop working. So, yeah, now we good. Okay. So here's two images, right? So here's our logo. Here's our logo. You know, all right. This is what we deal a lot with. Somebody will send in an image that, as we can see on the screen up here, is three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch. And they want this bad boy at 10 inches, right? They want 10 inches on it. Hey, guess what? That's what it looks like. So this is what happens when you send us low resolution files and we have to enlarge them. It looks like crap compared to a vector. And this is why vectors are preferred because of the clean, you know, how far do you want to go in here? You know, because they're that's what they're preferred for. Now, the reason um, that this is unpreferred is because look, look how blurry that's going to look. And, you know, like here on your computer screen, it doesn't look bad. But trust me, it looks like crap printed out. So what you want to do is you can bring in artwork, zoom in, take a look at it, make sure. Yeah, that, that's, that's going to be fine. See the difference between if we take this one to 10 inches and here's our difference between the two, 10 inches, 10 inches. See how the big of a difference that is? So make sure you're using that. The other thing, too, so you're wanting to color match, good luck. Um, you know, we have the best color um, the best color palettes that, that we're using. Now, we are in the process of building an ICC profile that should be able to help others out. But we have to something we have to think about is um, we're going to do our best to match colors to what it prints out. But anytime we need to do any color matching, if you need specialty colors, there's a fee that's associated with that. Um, you know, it's $125 an hour, minimum one hour. When we do color matching, it's usually like a one to three hour process because we have to print stuff out. We have to press it. We have to then go from there. And, and so it's a process, one to three hours to do that. Uh, so you really have to make sure that you really, really, really need that color to be exact if that's something you want to do, uh, especially if your design has six colors. Your design has six colors. You need all six of them to match. You're going to spend it. So now you're in it for right off the bat. Uh, you know, that's uh, what, uh, eight, wait, four, five, 750 bucks. So, you know, make sure that that's what you want. Make sure that you have the jobs to support if you're going to do that. Make sure to charge the customer on top of it. So we usually do pretty good with our colors. Where we see the biggest things at is in pastels. Pastels can be hard to hit. Um, some oranges can be, some greens. Uh, so we do our best with the lightness. When you send an image like this, we can't edit it. We can't change anything with it. We can try and go in and do our best, but we can't we can't really guarantee anything's going to look well with it. When you send us a vector, at least we can come in and, oh, we need this to be just a tad bit darker, a little more blue, or, you know, we need it to be something else. Okay, those are a lot easier to change. So that's why vector artwork is preferred. So we can get in here and actually get out the, the you know, the stuff that we need for you. Sending this way, not so much going to happen. Now, when we get artwork, one of the things that we do here is, here we go, Barb. Barb's got a good question. Do we you use Pantone color matching? Once we have our profiles built out, we will be able to somewhat, but we are only going to have a top 40 of colors. And then anything more than that is going to be, um, is going to be following that custom color um, area where it's going to be that 125 an hour for it because with our rip software and even when we switch to the other one the other color palettes won't import to that uh, pantone can be kind of tricky when it comes to working with certain software and what it'll allow in and what it won't allow in so it's where we would build our profile we'd be able to give you that profile along with the color charts uh, to go along with it so here's the color codes for it so while it may not look right on your screen uh, then it will look when it's printed out. That's why the color chart, you'll be able to order up, print it out. Uh, we'll print it out. You get it to yourself. You press it on something. Then you know, this is what this color looks like on this fabric. That's the color I need to use. So that's where we got with that. Um, now, when we have any of our artwork and we're starting with it, one of the things that we do is we want to 
I want to put a background behind everything, right? So for us, you know, here, we're just going to make a background for this. Um, you know, when I always use an off color on it. And what do I mean by an off color? It's something that I traditionally is not going to be in my artwork. So, you know, a green like this, traditionally not in my artwork. Uh, the reason being is because then I can put stuff on top of it and I can see where we have an issue with it. Now, here's this. Guess what? It's got a white background. I would say 90% of our problems are like this. Someone is designing on white and they bring in an artwork and they're like, yep, that'll work just fine. Now, remember, DTF, listen, I'll never call it DFT. DFT, you, you missed the boat. You're three years behind. It's DTF, right? Now, there is new debates whether it is direct to film or direct transfer film. So those are the two, but DTF is where it, where it is. Sublimation, it doesn't matter. Sublimation, you don't print white. So who cares if that's there? DTF matters because if we print this out, this is what it's going to look like. So that's why I say, hey, go ahead and put yourself on an off background. Put your artwork on it and see. Anything that you see is going to print. So that white is going to print out. I know if you don't want the white, you better figure out a way to get rid of the white. Now, there are some options uh, to get rid of the white. You can use Canva, uh, but you must use Canva Pro. Uh, that's the other thing is if you're designing in Canva and you, even if it's a PNG that you're using transparent background, if you do not have Canva Pro and you send a link or you send that file, it's going to come through with a background. You need to upgrade to Canva Pro to be able to send it without a background, with the transparent background. Which leads me to, if you are in this business, you need to buy some design software. Now, I know plenty of people that run you know, very successful businesses with Canva alone, and that's fine. But they're running Canva Pro, so they're at least spending the $10 a month on Canva. I guess I could, when I'm talking to you, I can uh, I can put myself on the little screen, right? Yeah. So when you're doing, you know, if you're doing that, just pay the $10 for it, right? I mean, it's part of your business. You want to be able to run your business right. You want to be able to have the tools that are needed to run it. Pay the money for it. Now, as you can see, we're running Corel Draw, And this is Corel X7. So that's why when people will send me Corel files, I'm like, listen, you need to send that as a PDF, an EPS, something, or a Corel Draw backwards down to X7. Because I have no need to upgrade yet. And when I do, I will. But for now, it still does everything I need it to. So... That's why I say we can't necessarily take the CDR files. Now, AI files, sure, we can use those as well. Photoshop files, yes, we can use those. Uh, our preferred is a transparent or a PNG with a transparent background. Those work the best for what we need it for. Uh, and you can see, let's see, if we take this same image and we're going to change it back to color. Uh, what color was that? Uh, we're going to just grab the color here, put it here, and... And I'm going to save this off as a PNG real quick. And you can't see it because it's on the other calendar, the other side, um, which we use. I guess I can bring it over here. We use the design wizard from TRW for um, for every, I don't think a day goes by where we don't use it uh, simply to do this as a PNG. I just got to type it in there. And then like this, it'll go through. It'll ask me what I want to see. What is that? And the one that's done down here at the bottom, it'll say here, it's done. It, oh, it's done. It's done like that. So now I can come in here, import. Uh, we'll go ahead and bring it in from the logo. Is that the right one? Yep, there's the PNG. So there's the difference, right? As a PNG file to the JPEG coming in. See the clarity difference? Even here, we bring it this side, and this is why PNGs work. See this file. I bring it over here, I can see that there's a background. I can see that there's not the giant square around it. This is why PNGs work very, very well and are preferred in this format. Uh, where did I go wrong when I sent you my file? Kristen, I don't know. What did you design in? How did you export it? Those are my biggest things I ask people. What are you designing in? How did you export it? Uh, some and, Oh, yours was... Yours was... Um, yours was the baseball numbers, right? Yours was the baseball numbers. So on that, when you're exporting things, if you export, especially text, so when it comes to letters, numbers, things like that, you want to export those. You want to convert things to curves. Uh, you want to make it so that it's a non-edible thing. Ooh, get out of there. So, you know, if we go in here and we're going to type in uh, fat dad, right? Fat dad, that's me. Probably can't see that. I probably need to enlarge it, right? So fat dad, that's me. 
right, come over here. Boom. There's Fat Dad. That's me. We're going to come in here. Okay. So with this, as long as it's still normal, it's still this, I can go in and edit it. Now, if I send you a file and you don't have the impact font, then impact won't let me, um, it won't convert it. It won't hold placement. It won't do things right. So you got to come up here and then you can use the, the keystrokes. Uh, what, and what do I got to do? What do I got to do? Uh, it is convert to curves, convert to curves, convert to curves, con control Q, convert that to curves. And guess what? You can no longer edit that. So now it becomes an object and that is the preferred way to do it. So you in um, Adobe, you want to flatten everything. In Corel, you want to change everything to curves. So that way nothing moves, nothing adjusts. Uh, and most of the times we can see when that is. Uh, yep, so you have the Corel with the wizard. So make sure you convert everything to curves. That's what you need to do. You need to convert it to curves before you send it all out. And then the wizard side, um, if you, let's see, which one is my uh, button over here. You can come down here at the bottom and you can break apart all effects uh, and you can, uh, yeah, break apart all effects and then they'll go right from there. If I remember right, if I remember right, that's what I'll do from it. Uh, let's see, Barb, what do you got? It was the numbers, yeah. And the same thing, that it's, you know, when it's curves, not curves, things like that, you want to make sure that it's sent there for it. Mm hmm. I have the TRW for Corel. Haven't used it for DTF. Normally, I use Illustrator and Photoshop. Yeah. So I only use Photoshop. Uh, I use Photoshop to set my white light. Um, so I, I I open it up. There's an action in there. And then uh, a Illustrator. The thing I use that for is there's a cup. There's a handful of people that that's all they design in. So they send me illy files, and I just make sure that everything is um, is good to go in that before I go. Sometimes importing into Corel, it doesn't bring everything it needs to. So uh, staying or it might move a layer here here and there. That's why with Illustrator, if somebody sends me that file, I open up in there just to make sure it's good. And then from there, I send it to a PNG. So when we're setting up sheets, right? So for us, we have our single sheets, but then we have our gang sheet options. Now, gang sheet options, we have a 24-inch. Now, these are 11 and a half inches wide. So we're going to change the dimensions of that. 11 and a half inches wide is what we're going to change that to. Let's move these guys over here. Oh, let's not move that guy. I don't need, I need my head. I need my whole head. We need to move that. So we'll come over here. So we've got this guy. We've got that one. And we've got this one, right? Uh, yeah, we got one more because we're going to move one more. So we're going to move this guy right there. So we've got a 24 inch one. So we're going to change that here. We've got a. 60 inch one and we've got 120 inch one so these are the three that we've got now one of the things to think about when you're looking at this is what what is it that you want how do you want to lay this out how do you want things to read um how do you want things to go ahead and uh and yeah see i can hit that other button i just where it is from there but these are your options with it now for those that may not realize how math or train or or things work over train you know translate is that the word i'm looking for you'll understand what i'm saying 24 inches is two feet 60 inches is five feet and 120 inches is 10 feet so when we send out orders uh we'll do by a bulk you know if somebody requests hey i need this this is this and this we'll do it by a bulk order and it's by per square foot so Say you order 80 images, right? So I need 80 images of this guy. Uh, we'll move this guy, right? Well, he's not a full foot, right? So if I take this and I make him six inches, right? Oh, let's keep the, the science and let's keep everything locked. So I make him six inches. Well, if I put him on here, I just go and there, all right? So we've got three of them on here. Three fit on the sheet. Yes. We're going to talk about ganging and moving things there. So we build out for two feet. Well, I need three images. Well, that's because your three images will fit on two feet. So when we do a bulk one, we've already made it there. Most of the times we'll make it let known in the um, in the notes that, you know, uh, when we're sending out an invoice and somebody send for a quote, that we can fit them all in this area. Now, most times we will not super gang a sheet. And what do I mean by super gang? So super gang is coming in here and doing stuff like this and bring it in here. We are not in the business to be building your gang sheets for you. We're in the business to be printing. If you want us to build your gang sheets, it's going to cost you, guess what, $125. 
because, you know, it's a minimum one hour art fee for it. And here's the thing. This is why we do it. I don't want to do this. You can do it. You have the design. You can do that. You can print however you want. But for us, the most we'll go is when there's a space between it. So if these are both five inches, this guy's five inches, great. Because we create negative space between the two. We make sure that things are um, lined up, which I know on this, uh, what is it? Place fill, uh, edit, right? Let's edit where it'll line up there. So, you know, we know here, yep, we can do this. Easy to cut around, right? Going the other way with it, like, yeah, you can totally set it up this way. And here's where people run into things with gang sheets at. They will try and do something like this, where, hey, we've got this here. We're going to bring this guy in. So we've got a bunch of these. All right, cool. I'm going to put this one right here, and I'm going to put this one right there, and I'm just going to move it up. And they're going to do everything they can to make space. And, oh, look, I got space up here. So let me go ahead and make a smaller version for myself. I'm going to put that right here. And I'm going to fill every space with this, which, great. If you want to do that, knock yourself out. Because at the end of the day, we're just the printer. We're going to print what is sent to us. If you need us to want us or want us to go through files, it's a fee. We can go through and look and check and all that, but we don't. You know, we just print, you know, garbage in, garbage out. So whatever comes in goes out. If the file is bad, we don't know. We don't know if this is supposed to be white behind here. If, you know, is this supposed to be here or not? It's in the artwork. We just print. So you're going to want to double check. And this is where that green background comes in behind everything. So you can see what it is. Now, when it comes to ganging sheets, this is why I'm not super fond of putting as much artwork as you can in the spot. Because, yes, you are maximizing your sheet location. And, yes, before anybody asks, you know, are we going to get bigger stuff? Yes, we are in the midst of getting our 24-inch uh, dryer. So then when we get the matching dryer to the matching printer, we'll be able to offer that. Two things will happen. We'll be able to offer 22-inch wide sheets, but our 11-inch or 11.5-inch sheets will then drop down to 11-inch. Why? So we can still run two of them parallel to each other. So, you know, there's a give and take there with it. When it comes to something like this, you have to ask yourself, how much time is it taking me to cut between all of these, to not cut anything up, to make sure that there's plenty of room in here? Because listen, that is a pain. You're gonna cut in this spot. How big is this spot? Because on the screen, you're like, oh yeah, I can I can run something through there. Now let's measure it, right? Measure it. Uh, you're what? What is that? 0 0.02 inches apart. Come on now. You're not doing that. You're not, you're not going to stress yourself out like that. Don't, 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 don't. So just because you can make it fit doesn't necessarily mean you should make it fit. I like to leave at least a quarter inch border around everything. So it's an easy cut. When you're doing production, guess what? When we have something like this, we're going to get rid of these guys. We're going to take this back and we're going to go, you know, these ones are five, you know, five inches so it's easy for us to show. We come in here, we do these five by five, that's it. They're grouped, boom, we're gonna come down here. We need a, a few of them. So we're gonna come down here, just go ahead and keep adding some more to it. Okay, when, you, when we set it up this way, what do we have here? We've got one cut across, zoop, zip, zip, zip. There's the cuts across and then a cut it in half. There's nothing around anything. There's nothing hard to do. There's no real thinking in it. There's going to be plenty of space between it. You're going to be able to make it work. It's going to be fine. It Yes, you do have open spots. I get it. I understand it. But in today's business, your biz, biggest expense is yourself and your labor. So while, yes, you can fit all of the stuff in here and all of these little things in here, one, are you really going to take the time to do it? Or are you going to want to spend that time? And the best way to do it is just time yourself out. How long did it take you to break down that sheet? Now, if it's for a customer, make sure you add that time in there. If it's for yourself, well, then that's your time. But it still costs you. So you want to make sure that you are not um, you're not trying to overextend yourself on something, doing something like that because it's tough. Like there's ooh, what's going in there? Hide, 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 hide. Go over there. Okay. Uh, so that's something to think of. You know, when it comes to breaking these sheets down, how difficult is it to break that down? Is it going to be something that's going to take an hour to do? 
oh, I didn't realize that. It was going to have to cut around each other piece because we see it a lot in circle designs like this because we take this design here and let's just delete them all and we're going to break this guy back apart. And now let's make these, you know, eight inch ones, right? So eight inch, we can't fit two side by side or six inch, six inch will make sense. We can't fit two side by side, but I can come in here. Oh, and I can drop one here, right? I can drop one right there. And now I can fit more on the sheet because I can come in here and where is my happy medium at? Where does this need to be for me to get into it, right? Okay. So you can still, you're going to fit more on the sheet. But before where we had a single cut this way and a single cut this way, now there is no single cut. You're going to be cutting this one out here, and then you're cutting this one out here, and then you're cutting here, and then you're cutting here, and down the way, down the way, down the way, down the way. So this is why you say, yes, you can do it. Load up as much as you want. But just remember, the less straight cuts you have, the longer it is going to take for you to break down. There. <laughs> look at this. Uh, I, yep, I learned my lesson while cutting things apart. And I think we all have because we look at um, – we look at the screen and we're like, oh, that that's plenty of room, right? It's plenty of room in there. Or here, let's see, we can get this, you know, a little bit closer. Oh, I can still get through there. Oh, I bet I can still get through there. Oh, I bet I can. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can get right through there. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to ruin one or the other. And so don't cause yourself the stress from it. Yeah, that's where a roll cutter is must. If, especially if you've got straight lines, you pull it off straight across. Boom, straight down, straight down. When you're doing things like this, I mean, you're freehanding that through there, trying to make it work, and it is just not not fun at all. First rule of spandex, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Hey, somebody wants to put a 10-pound sausage in a 5-pound casing, more power to you. If you, if, if you can make it fit, what, what is it? If, it? if it fits, it ships. I'm not going to tell anybody not to do anything. You can, you can say whatever you want to say, but yes. Yes. Uh, and like Barb said, I like to I like to space so I can easily cut them apart with a trimmer. Yeah, you have to know what you're doing with it, what your time is, and how it is to cut these things apart because sometimes it can be a huge time suck, especially when someone's doing something like this. I had one of these recently, and they were like, "Why did you let me order this?" And I said, "Because uh, I just print, kid. I, I am just a printer." So. They had this and this and this. Is that? Yeah. I think this one was spaced out a little bit more. But they are three-inch circles. And then from here, the next one, is that about how it went? Yeah, it basically went like this. Yeah, that seems legit enough. So it basically went like this every time. So... That's what they were going to have to do. Three inches, theirs were two and three quarters, three inches, somewhere around there. So they had to cut around each, every single one of them. Instead of straight lines where it was just zipper, 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 zoom, 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 it was, ah, crap, why did I do this? Whose idea was this? This is pretty smart, wasn't it? But I'm saving so much money. Oh, man, I really maximized this. Oh, yeah, I can't believe I just saved myself four cents by cutting this. This is the dumbest idea ever. I want a cupcake. I want to go to bed. I need a drink. Oh, look, I cut into one. Now I got to start over. So that's something to think about when you're doing those. The other thing, especially if you're doing uh, bulk orders where let's say we're going to order, you know, this design. Um, that's not the one, right? Because that's a garbage one. So we're going to order this design, right? And it's going to be 10 inch. Oops. We're going to go to that guy so that way I can see. So it's 10 inches, right? You're going to fill out your sheet. You're going to have it on here. Figure out how many you need. But I would always, at the cost of what it is, and you're going to charge your customer for this, order an extra one or two, right? Because anything can happen. You could set your press up wrong. You could have a bad print. You could have a bad shirt. You could have something just not go the way that it should. And then you're, you're stuck waiting for another transfer. So if it's me... And I do this even when we order transfers from other places for things. I always order extra. I can throw them away. I can take that full amount. And when I'm, if I'm billing out the job where I know, hey, they're going to need, you know, 40 feet of this. And it's 450 a square foot. Uh, so 40 feet of this. And I'm going to do the math real quick for you. 450 times 40, $180 for the transfers. Well, what I'm going to do is um, just be able to 
Um, add an extra one in there because I'm going to divide it amongst amongst it all anyway, right? So make yourself a little less stressed and just or an extra one too with it so that way you're fine with it because just in case, right? You can use it for display. You can throw it away. You can use it for a grab bag, a giveaway. You can do whatever you want with it. Throw it in a different product, use it, whatever. But at least then you're not waiting on something for it there. Uh, saving money. Yeah. Isn't labor time extra cost? Absolutely, Dale. Labor is our biggest expense. For us, we know where our labor rate is. Now, here's what I'm going to ask you, right? You know, and if you're feeling up to it, you're feeling a little, a little feisty, who would like to tell me what it costs them to run their business per minute? Do you know what it costs you to run your business per minute? If you feel comfortable doing that, telling us, let us know. Put it in the comments there for us. Uh, for us, we figured everything up. When we, when we do everything all in to run our business, it's $125 an hour. So basically $2 a minute, right? So I know for every minute it takes me to do something in the business, it's $2. So if I'm spending time on emails, it's $2 a minute. If I'm spending artwork time, it's $2 a minute. So I say, hey, we have a minimum charge, $125 an hour. That's what it needs to be. Now, do we make $125 an hour? Absolutely not. That is what it costs us to run our business because we're not in production mode. You're really only in production mode maybe a quarter of the time, right? Because you're designing, you're ordering, you're talking to customers, you're making social media posts, you're getting back to emails, you're answering phones, you're going through paperwork, you're doing all of the business stuff. And in the grand scheme of things, production is only a small percentage of the time that you're actually you know, doing stuff, making money for your business when you're doing it. So that $125 an hour, that's covering stuff like our payroll. That's covering stuff like our taxes. That's covering stuff like our insurance. That's covering stuff like our rent, our utilities. That's covering the business expense. So that's where we, you know, we ran our numbers. That's where we're at, two dollars a minute for it. So we know, hey, if this is going to save me money because I was able to gain so much there, but it took us twenty minutes to do. Well, twenty minutes times two dollars. That's forty dollars. So did we really save anything? In our head, we thought we did. Because hell, I can just, I got as much on there as possible. But in reality, we didn't. Because we spent 40 minutes cutting them apart sheets and something that should have taken four minutes. You know, so we it took us 10 times longer, which cost us more money. So that's things that's like, a, hey, that is a 40, that's a $40 cup of coffee. Absolutely, right? That's what I'm saying. Like we have to start looking. If, if you want to run your business as a business, you know you need to know what it costs you to be in business. And how do you do that? Know your numbers. Uh, now, we have a program together uh, through our success group. You can go check out there. It's the five keys. That's where we walk you through your business. You know, hey, you're from everything from knowing your pricing, um, know what it costs you to be in business, uh, pricing your products for profit. Profit's not a dirty word, folks. You know, I don't know where people get off thinking, hey, uh, I shouldn't be charging this for it. Yes, you should. You need to be making money. McDonald's now has like a $15 burger meal, right? $15 at McDonald's. So why are you still selling shirts at $10 a shirt for a custom shirt? It boggles my mind, boggles my mind, boggles my mind. I just, I don't get it. So make sure that you are, you're doing that, uh, you know, that you know how to price your things, how to do it correctly. And one of the things that was floated to me today on a call was about starting up uh, my own mastermind group inside of our success group. So that's something that we're, we're toying around with. Uh, it's something, you know, you'd be in a group with me, we'd be bouncing ideas off each other, we'd be setting stretch goals, we'd be doing a lot of that business building, but more in that one on one setting. Uh, if that's something that you're interested, put in the comments, let me know, you know, I'm gonna put feelers out there and ask people what they Think about that if it's something that they're interested in and how we could build that together because I think it's something that we could, you know, I think it's something that we could really do. Uh, I know it's something because we've done it on the, our success group side already. Where we've got two groups of people over there and this one, you know, hey, how can we do this better? So we're looking at doing a few different things, a few different things on that. Okay, so back to our artwork. So we've got our artwork here. We decided that this was going to be a five foot sheet, right? So Looking at this, um, let's see, five foot, I, right? The, the sheet I picked was the five foot one. Uh, each one of these is 10, so I can put these in here. Now I'm just gonna come up here and grab this, and then in my space, boom, boom, boom. They're spaced apart. Not very much, are they? How many do I have in here? Six, one, two, three, four, five. That's why I've got six on here. I'm like, what is going on? Why does it seem like it shouldn't be this tight? I should only have five in here. So we've got them in here. We're making sure our spacing is good with it. 
So we spaced it apart. Plenty of, plenty of, plenty of room to cut this one apart. Then we're going to export it as a PNG. All right, so in the wizard, it's super simple. You just come over here to export. And we're going to do Fat Dad Logos, TWT on there. And then you just boom. the PNG button. Now, what I want to only do is, especially when I'm building stuff out, um, I come in and I put in, let's see, once this is done exporting and saving off, because it does, with my computer slowness and not being as happy as it, as it could be, it does take a minute. But anytime I'm working on stuff, especially here, first one, when I set up the artwork for this, I always come in here and I just lock the object. So that way, like this one, I can still grab this and move it around if I'm trying to. Once it's locked, I can't do anything with it. So now what we're going to do is go over to the um, we're going to go over to the ordering side of things, right? So we've got this, we've got this saved. We are going to stop sharing this screen, and then I'm going to share another screen. So the whole ordering process and what you need to do, explain how things work on that side of it. So on this side, we're going to share the screen. I got a Chrome tab. We got Fat Dad custom design, so let's go ahead and share that. Uh, and then I'm going to bring this guy over here, so that way I can see the screen too. All right. So on the screen, here's what you want. Um, remember, we offer all kinds of fun stuff in there too, so you know you can just get in there and look around. But DTF transfers—that's where you want to go. Now you have your options on DTF transfers. Production time, three to five business days. That's what our standard turnaround time is. You have single image, you have gang sheets, you have glitter gang sheets, and then you have ready to press. So go through each one of them. We'll start with the ready to press. Ready to press, we drop these once a week. We come through. There are different um, themes in here. So if you go to Black History Month in here, there's two different ones in. Once you go inside there, there's a bundle. There's the different ones to select from. Uh, we do have a fair amount of different ones to go through and see. Uh, once you get in here, and like I said, we're going to continue to add new ones. Uh, this Thursday is going to be St. Patrick's Day, and there won't be one next week because we are in Vegas. So remember, you know, no rush jobs out next week, three to five days. So if you order on Monday, anything that's ordered through Friday, we're going to make sure ships out before we leave. Ordering on Monday, guess what? Three to five days. Monday, Tuesday, because that's business day one, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So here, there's four days. So if it ships out Friday or Monday, because business days, we're still within our three to five day windows. There just won't be any rush services. But we will do bundle drop this Thursday. It will be St. Patrick's Day. There might be two bundles in it. We'll see. And then the week after we get back, that one is going to be baseball and softball. So we do have a bunch of different packs in here. Uh, like I said, as we continuously add more, you can go in and do that. If you have a suggestion for one that you would like to see, you can send us a message and we would be able to help out more with that as well. Uh, so we can say, hey, uh, yep, these are ones by request. This is one that we're doing for it. So those are the ready to press ones. Now gl glitter, currently, we actually have some more glitter coming in to try, but we only have, we're only doing 10 foot gang sheets for this. But someone's like, but why Todd, you offer, it, you offer the other ways. Here's the big reason is when we have to run something through the printer, there's a lead and a tail. Between the two, it can be anywhere from five feet to 10 feet that we have to run off because you have the tail where it runs through because you're not able to print right off the bat. You have to feed it through the machine, connect up. Then at the back end, you can't cut right off the back end for it because it needs a tail to run through it. So you've got a space of waste. On this, this is why we want 10 foot sheets. If we did one design out of this, we'd waste more than what we would sell on it. So that's why only 10 foot sheets. Now, uh, 10 foot gang sheets. Now, here's the other thing, too, is on this one, the layout size of this. The layout size is different because of the film different size. Where our traditional film is 11 and a half inches is where you're able to have the design at. On glitter, it's 10.25. So make sure that it's 10.25, 120 inches. We'll print and ship and get it out to you from there. So that's something to, to double check when you're doing with the glitter. Only 10 foot now. Now, we have more come in. If we get some more things coming in, or we want to, um, we're going to test, try out. We could go to it if we, once the 24 inch dryer comes in and we go to the 24 inch film, there might be more of it because then we'll, what we'll do is glitter that right now, what we do is we wait until we have about 50 feet build up at least and then we print. So that way it's not getting swapped in and out of things. So 
um, glitter option is available there for it. And it, it's, it looks, the current glitter that we have looks a lot better under lighting. It really flashes. It really looks good. Um, it can kind of look bland when you're staring at it, but under the lights, it really shows off pretty good for it. So other options that we have, we got there for glitter, um, is that we have gang sheets and single image sheets. Now, what's the differences between these two? Single images, if you just want a four by four, a four and a half by 11, 11 by seven, uh, or a 15 by 11. So that's the sheet size. You just want a single image. And you can get, you know, two, three, four, if we go in here, you can get them. And different prices are set for different items when you get in here. But realistically, if you're ordering a bunch, just build yourself the gang sheet. It's gonna be cheaper. Um, whatever sheet you sheet size you select this one four and a half inches by four and a half inches what does that mean that means that your image can be no larger than 4.5 by 4.5 if it is larger we are going to send you an invoice for the difference of it and move you up to the next size sheet this one four and a half inches by 11. this one 11 by 7. and this one down here is going to be your 15.5 by 11. So those are the four different sheet sizes that you have. Now, clearly the gang sheets are where you can really um, maximize your return on it, which that's what we've really been focused on, but people ask for it, so we do have these available. Now, when we get into gang sheets, like we said, gang sheets, from 11 and a half by 24, that'd be 11.5 by two feet, it's $14. If you want a five foot, it is $25. And if you want a 10 foot, 120 inches, it is 45. So those are the three sheet sizes that you have, a 24 inch, a 60 inch, 120 inches, two, five, 10. Now, when it comes to print production time, uh, an additional fee will be sent for rush fees. So our standard time is three to five business days. If you want two day business, that means it's 10%. So you're gonna pay 10% extra for those two days. That means, hey, it's gonna be out before those three days. You need it, you order it today, you need it tomorrow. Hey, you need it, us to print, that's next business day. It's gonna to print tomorrow. So we order today, today's Tuesday, and it's going to print by Wednesday, Thursday with this option. It's going to print tomorrow with this option. We do offer same day prints, but those prints must be placed by 10 a.m. Central Standard Time at under 60 square feet. Now, where did we come up with the number of 60 square feet? It's roughly what we can print in an hour. So we know, hey, when we start looking at our print schedule, how many hours in the day, where things are, what time our cutoff time is, because we try to be done printing for the day by 4 p.m. so we can still get things to our drop off by five. And also we do have a, a few other options after that, but hey, you know, five o'clock is our cutoff time. We wanna get out of here for the day, except on Tuesdays. I like spending it with you guys. So those are your options, same day, or your standard three to five business days. And right now, everything is going up pretty close to that three days. Some stuff is even going out in two days. But if you want to make sure that you get it by a specific day, you need to check and see what the timeline is. You can't just say, hey, well, he usually gets the stuff out to me in two days. Well, hey, like today, uh, three orders that came in for rush jobs. Uh, one was 120 feet. One was 85 feet. One was 65 feet. So that took up a big part of the production schedule. So things are, you know, that might have been able to go out today normally before the jobs came in, aren't going out until tomorrow because they're not going to print till tomorrow. That's why we have that three to five days. It gives us a buffer. It also gives us a buster buffer so when we can do things like go to shows, so we can still fit within that print schedule. It gives us when we're on vacation, we can do that. It gives us if a machine error, a machine something happens there, we're able to take care of it there. So those are going to be your production times. Now. We have shipping. So you gotta select which shipping that you want, standard shipping. So we use UPS ground. Most times it's three days is gonna get there. Sometimes some of you live in off the beaten paths and so it adds the extra stuff to it. So you're looking, you know, it could be five days to it, but we use UPS ground. Uh, the two options that you have for upgrade are two day, and this is UPS or next day with UPS. Now most times a two day upgrade is 10 to $15. And when you upgrade to next day, it's a $20 to $25 charge. That's about average. Uh, you know, if I had to say here, put a hard number on it, say add $15 to what you think it's going to be, add 25 to what you think it's going to be. So if we want this gang sheet and we want to have a two-day shipping or two-day turnaround time on printing, and we want a two-day on um, on shipping, 
here's what's going to happen. You're going to pay the 45 plus a normal shipping rate, which is the $9.99. You're going to pay that today when you order. And then what we're going to do is send an invoice for the difference. So we're going to send you the invoice for the rush fee for the production. And we're going to send you a rush fee for the shipping. Now, your order doesn't, if you select these options, your order does not print or ship until you pay those invoices. If you're just sitting on them, so are we. You're going in that three to you'll start in a three days. Okay, we'll go ahead and print now because it's in the normal print schedule. So you want to make sure that you're if you're selecting these options that you're checking your emails uh, to get those invoices paid. So we selected our options. Now we're going to add our file. So here's the thing: add the file. We're going to pick the last one that we did, Tuesday with Todd. Okay, here's what it is. It's uploading our file. So there's upload the PNG file. There we go. File is uploaded. Now. Do you have the rights to print this? Yes or no? Pretty standard question. Is this something that you have the rights to print? You know, we just did some stuff for a college. They sent us the paperwork on it. Okay, great. But if you're trying to get Nike stuff, Adidas stuff right now, uh, NFL, um, who is it? The Eagles and Chiefs. Yeah, you don't have the rights to print those. Just because you bought an image off of Etsy does not give you the rights to reproduce that image. You know, they are breaking the law by doing that. Uh, so here is one of the ways we're actually changing this. We're upgrading the, the wording to it. So that way you are taking 100% responsibility. Because listen, I don't know every logo that's out there. I don't know every character that's out there. I don't know. There's a lot that I don't know. And so we have a lot of great artists. I don't know that somebody didn't draw this bear versus this bear or drew that or this. I don't know. So this is to help cover our butts and putting the responsibility on you. We're changing this up to so you can know 100% what you're doing uh, and what is entails when you select yes or no. Because, hey, you have the rights to print it. We're going to print. If anybody comes after us, we're going back to you. And that's why we're changing a little, changing some wording around on this. Now, job file, job or file name PO. So if you have, uh, you know, there are people that email us in stuff where, you know, there's a PO on it. They have multiple jobs that they're ordering for. Put your job things in here. Oh, something else I just thought of. When you're naming your files, let me go back and um, let me, let's see, can I do this? No, I got to delete this. Remind me name files here in a second. But I, I guess I can say when you're naming those files, don't leave them untitled. Why do you do that? I think I'm sitting at like 150 untitled ones right now and, you know, 100 untitled twos. Name a file so it's easy to find. The way that I prefer when people send me files is their name, the date, and the page. So if you're sending four pages, guess what? You can send Todd Downing, 131.23, page one of two. The next one would be page two of two. That makes it really simple, easy. Because when there's an artwork issue, I can say, I don't know, it's untitled. I don't know what file it is. It says it's untitled, so now it's on you to do it. When you send files that name, it makes it a lot easier. Something else too. When you have, um, when you have a ten foot sheet, and you have a five foot image, you can upload two five foot images in a ten foot image. So you know, I know Canva and some other pro some other programs kind of have issues once you get beyond that point. So you can you don't have to select two five foots at the twenty five bucks. You can select. A single 10 foot and just upload two five foot files so that's perfectly fine for you to do there so we go through there's our page size there's everything there we're gonna we're gonna call this twt add the bag all right so add the bag here it is we're gonna x at we are going to ask you a few things one people often send me hey i don't know where to put my promo code or my discount code or my coupon code if you scroll down right here underneath it says have a promo code well, promo coupon or gift card, redeem your code. So you can put it right there. So for this one, if we go fat dad 10 and we're going to apply, boom, there's your 10% off discount. Fat dad 10 saves you 10%. Put that in there, it saves it. Then you're going to put in your email and you're going to check out. You either check out, uh, you can check out normally, you can check out with PayPal, PayPal credit. So we do offer those issues, those instances. We do not offer anything with Klarna or Afterpay or any of that. Reason being is because, yes, it's better for you because if you place a large order, you can get it. But, hey, you should be collecting all your money up front, so you should have it and not have to use those options. Us, on the other end, we get tagged with a fee on it. 
And we've already got fees built in because that's just the way business works. But those ones are some crazy fees on it. And I'm not down with that. So those are your options for checkout. Uh, you can use checkout, you can PayPal, uh, checkout, or you can PayPal credit card. And that's it. That is simply the easiest way uh, to order, to place your orders, how artwork should look. Um, you know, when you do math on where you can uh, get stuff at, you know, you're at 450 a square foot. How many images can you fit in there? If you've got all in the shirt, pressing everything at $9, you know, you're selling that shirt at $20, there's $11 profit that's right in there for it. If you're selling it at 15, there's six, but you better be selling a lot more at 15 because you deserve to make money off of this as well. Okay. So I did, you know, that was, a, I think, you know, we did an hour because we got right into it today and we're right there with it. Anybody have any questions, comments, concerns to ask? We'll stick around for a little bit longer, but you know, hey, now's your time to ask if you are, uh, in, you know, if there's any questions, I would be happy to do that for you. Uh, upcoming tomorrow, Morning Mindset. We do that Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning, 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Get in there for that. Uh, I'm going to post the goals thing because, hey, a lot of you are slacked off and not putting your stuff for that. So we're going to revisit that for a little bit and talk goals. Uh, and then Thursday will be the bundle drop, which is going to be St. Patrick's Day. Uh, Friday will be a morning mindset. Next week was just Monday. Then we're at the APA show. So if you're going to APA, let me know. Uh, me and Renee will be there. I know a few other ones will be there as well. So if we can, if we want to meet up at the after party dinner, that's sweet. If you want to head down to Fremont Street with us, you're more than welcome to as well. Uh, I'm, I don't plan on doing a whole lot of gambling. Um, in my younger days, I wouldn't have mind just throwing, you know, a couple thousand away and be like, ah, it's Vegas. Let's have fun. Now I'm, I'm very conservative with that. And they're like, okay, you know, we're going to spend a, maybe, I don't even know what a good number is to say. You know, a couple hundred bucks, sure. You know, put in a put in a dollar, win a car. Put in a dollar, win a car. Great, yard glass of booze to walk around with. I'm down with that. I'm down with the people watching. Um, I might even bring shoes, but I highly doubt it. We'll, we'll be good to go on that. Now, you forgot what your goals were. Well, Brian, we'll, we'll talk your goals tomorrow. So that's what we're gonna do. Is remind and go on that. And Brian, uh, what, what the hell was I gonna ask you on your stuff? I don't know. I think of it. I'll message you on it. But that was there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it was. Hey, you're very welcome. I, I figured the more information I can prepare somebody with, the less questions I'm going to get on the back end. And now what I'm going to do is use this video. And I'm going to say, hey, when somebody has questions on DTF, go here and watch this. I feel I get a good representation of what artwork should look like, the ordering process, everything with that. Shoes, I know, right? I took them, I took them out to California with me. I mean, I have shoes on right now. As it was cold. It was cold out this morning. I do have shoes on. I'm not gonna. I'm not fronting. When when it's down like negative temps and there's ice out there and it's slippery. I mean, I did that the one winter and we saw a car accident. And I had to get out in the snow and it kind of was out there for a little bit and a little frosty. So I'm kind of trying to be mindful of my toes. But yeah, when it comes to showtime, flippy flops. It is. I did all of Long Beach flippy flops. There's no reason for me not to do it again. But if that's it, uh, I think we're going to get out of here. Remember, uh, we'll be out here at Morning Mindset. Uh, if you found this information, you know, good, you know, make sure to share with your friends, right? Grab the link. Make sure to like, subscribe, share. Only about 20% of my viewers are. And I see those analytics. I need, you guys, to, I'd like to flip that. At like 80%, right? You know, we could, we were supposed to, I set a goal last week to break 2,000 subscribers by uh, within five days. It didn't happen. We're, we're short, but... If you could, you know, hit us the like, and subscribe, and share. That would be awesome. All right. You guys have an amazing night. We will be back in here for Morning Mindset tomorrow morning. Peace, love, press on. We will see you guys next time.